Lesson 40 is about the quotient rule for exponents. The distributive property of rational expressions that contain negative e exponents will be the second part of our lesson. Now, the quotient rule for exponents looks like this. We have x to the m over x to the n is equal to x to the m minus n, which could also be equal to 1 over x to the n minus m. Please copy this down and write it in your notes. Pause now if you need more time. Let's look at an example that will help th to make this make more sense to us. Let's say we have x to the seventh. We have x to the seventh over x squared. Our m value is seven and our n value is two. So the way we're gonna write in the middle is x to the m minus n. We're gonna say x to the seven minus two. x to the seven minus two. Well, that would have to be equal to x to the fifth. Let's write that on the bottom because we're going to simplify that here. That's x to the fifth. Now, if we want to move on to the third part of this quotient rule for exponents, we know we could write it in the other direction as well. We could write the reverse or use the numerator as 1. And the denominator is now going to be n minus m. We do the opposite. So n minus m would be 2 minus 7. We have x to the 2 minus 7. Well, that would have to be equal to x to the negative fifth. And remember, that's x to the negative fifth as our denominator. Our numerator is 1. I cut that a little close on space there. We've got 1 over x to the negative fifth, which we know is the same thing as x to the fifth power because if we move the negative power into the opposite side of our fraction, the power becomes the opposite sign. Let's go ahead and look at a few examples with this quotient rule for exponents. All right, here we go. We want to simplify. We want to write the answer with x in the numerator. So we have x to the sixth over x to the fourth. This is going to be equal to x to the six minus four, which is equal to x squared. And we've got our final answer. We've written our answer with the x in the numerator. Remember this is x squared over 1, so we're all done. You don't need to write over 1 because that's the same thing as just x squared. Let's look at our next example. All right, we want to simplify again. This time we want to write the answer with x in the denominator. So we know from our last example that this was equal to x squared because 6 minus 4 was 2. And if we want to write it with the x in the denominator, we're going to say this is going to be 1 over x. And remember, when we have a power, we want to make it sign the opposite. We just move it all to the denominator. So we're going to get 1 over x to the negative second power. And we're all done. This is another way that we can report our answer. In our lesson, you will have some problems that we will ask you to report it like this. Okay, we want to simplify x to the negative a over x to the b. When it says simplify, let's go ahead and write our answer with a positive exponent, whichever way that turns out. So let's write it with it in the numerator first. We're going to get x to the negative a minus b. If we have x to the negative a minus b, that's one way that we can report our answer. And it's going to look like this this would be considered correct because you weren't told if it should be in the numerator or denominator. The other way that we could report our answer would be like this. We could say, well, 1 over x, and then remember we have to work in the opposite direction. We're going to say b minus negative a, b minus negative a, since we're working in the opposite direction, which is going to be equal to 1 over x to the b, double negative makes a positive, plus a. And we've got our final answer. Either one of these will get you full credit, but it's nice to report your answers with positive exponents or positive powers. So if you had to pick a referable one, let's pick the bottom one because we've got all positive powers. But this one means exactly the same thing. Let's move on to our next example. All right, this one looks a little bit more tricky, but we're going to take it one step at a time. We're going to simplify. 
Okay, if we simplify, we need to figure out x to the what power, y to the what power, and z to which power. Now in this one, let's go ahead and report it with our answer in the numerator. So we're going to get x to the negative 5 minus, well x is down here and we have x to the first, so minus 1. Then our y's, we have y to the 6 minus, this is y squared, so we have y to the 6 minus 2. Then we have z, we've got z to the first, so z to the first minus something, z to the first minus negative 3. And we've got it all written out. Let's simplify. x to the negative 5 minus 1, that must be x to the negative 6. y to the 6 minus 2, that's y to the 4th. And z to the 1 minus negative 3, double negative, gives us a positive. So we're going to get z to the 1 plus 3, that's 4. And this is one way that we can report our answer. We're all done. Okay, let's look at our final problem for today. We want to use the distributive property to expand. And we want to write the answer with all exponents positive. Let's go ahead and begin. We've got our factor on the outside. Using the distributive property, we're going to multiply against the first term within our parentheses. Remember, this first term is over 1. That'll help us to see our multiplication. So what we're going to get is 4x to the negative second times y to the fourth times x squared, all is our numerator. Our denominator is going to have to be y to the fourth times 1, which is y to the fourth. Our problem, y to the fourth power. Our problem tells us to subtract, so we're going to subtract. Then we're going to multiply against the second term within our parentheses. We're going to get 4 times 3, let's write it all out this time, 4 times 3, x to the negative second times x to the fourth. And we're going to divide that by, we've got y to the fourth times y to the negative second. y to the fourth times y to the negative second. Now we can go ahead and simplify. If we go ahead and simplify, well, we've got 4x to the negative second and x to the second. Well, x to the negative second and x to the second must be 0, x to the 0th power, and that's just equal to 1. So we're going to get 4, and then we've got y to the fourth over y to the fourth. And now as you look at this, hopefully you're thinking y to the fourth over y to the fourth, well that's just equal to one. That all cancels out. So we're just left with four on the left hand side. Let's work on the right hand side. We're going to subtract, and then we've got 12. We've got x to the negative second and x to the fourth. That's going to have to leave us with x squared. And we're going to divide that by, well we've got y to the fourth, times y to the negative second, that's going to leave us with y squared. So in our problem, we've got the final answer. We want to rewrite one more time so it looks more simple. We'll write the final answer in blue. We've got 4, because everything else canceled out, minus 12x squared, y squared, over y squared. So we've got it right here. We can go ahead and box it. We can make sure we've done what the problem said. It said write the answer with all exponents positive. All of our exponents are positive. We're all done. We've completed this problem. Lesson practice will be on page 163. Make sure you've got your notes complete, and I'll see you during our next class.